Many white evangelicals claim that God wrote the U.S. Constitution. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you seven reasons why that's nothing more than false, dangerous, white supremacy malarkey. Hello, I'm attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. Each week, we bring you at least one legal analysis of some trending story regarding politics, policies, personality, or pop culture to empower you with the information you need to defy an unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. If that interests you, and I sure hope it does, go ahead, like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell so you'll get notified every time we upload one of these videos. All right, so we're gonna get into this. I want to debunk the idea, the notion, the dangerous white supremacist notion that God wrote the US Constitution. So let's go ahead and go to another screen and we'll get right into this. So the first thing I wanna do, again, here's the title screen. Debunking the dangerous white supremacy lie that God wrote the U.S. Constitution. Now, before we get into it, let me remind you, if you have an African-American child, boy especially, in public school, I want to recommend my book, Education and Justice. It does two things. It tells you in detail, based on research, not my opinions, but research, how public schools are really mistreating African-American male students particularly, and a lot of this applies to females as well. Second thing it does is with that education, it then helps you become a strong advocate for your child. So those are the two things that this book does. You can get your copy from Amazon or you can get it from our website, inpartpublishing.com. Also, let me go ahead and make a very special and exciting announcement. We're organizing and we're creating a new organization for our YouTube channel subscribers and anyone else because we desire to create a movement. We want to organize around an agenda and we want to push that agenda. We want to push that agenda because that agenda will be focused on the progress of African-American people. So we will come back and share with you when that organization is up and running. Of course, we are doing websites and a whole bunch of other things to get it off the ground in an effective way. So it's going to take us several weeks, but we will be back with that announcement soon. Okay. Now, I want to recommend a book. You know, I love recommending not just my book, but other books. The name of this book is The End of White Christian America by Robert P. Jones, Ph.D. Dr. Jones does a tremendous job pointing out the racism in white evangelical circles. And not only does he have a Ph.D., so he's a well-learned, well-studied person, but he himself is a white evangelical who grew up in white evangelicalism. So he really knows the people, the practices, the thinking, the ideology, the philosophy, and so on. So he wrote this book. He wrote several others that are very good, equally good. So I feel very good turning you on. If you've never heard of Dr. Jones, Robert P. Jones, I feel very good turning you on to him. In fact, I'm going to quote this book now. Dr. Jones said, in 1956, the fiery Baptist preacher, Reverend W.A. Criswell, pastor of Dallas's first Baptist church. Now, again, this is 1956. This is the heyday of segregation, Jim Crow, etc. The largest Baptist church in the world at the time accepted an invitation from South Carolina State Senator Strom Thurmond 
If you're old enough to remember Strom Thurmond, you know he was a huge white supremacist, a very dedicated, mean-spirited white supremacist and segregationist from South Carolina. So he invited this preacher, Reverend W.A. Chriswell, to speak on February 22, 1956, to the General Assembly of the South Carolina Legislature about the issue of the day, segregation. So Reverend Chriswell came to speak to the South Carolina legislature. So he wasn't invited to go speak to a church. He was going into the hall and to the very sanctuary of South Carolina politics with the message. And of course, since it was coming from the Reverend Chriswell, it carried extra weight. And that's why I'm doing this video because I am a minister. I am an attorney. I understand two things very well. The Bible and the U.S. Constitution. They have been the center of my life for most of my life. The U.S. Constitution and the Bible. And the way white evangelicals try to mix the two up, again, is very dangerous. It's also sacrilegious. So the Reverend had no problems going to the South Carolina legislature. All right, let's go back to the screen. In his rambling, extemporaneous remarks, Chris Well defended social segregation within the church and in society at large, marshalling an argument that has long served as a justification for slavery and segregation. Chris Well explained that because each race has different physical traits, that's true, right? And psychological aptitudes, that's true on an individual basis. And those physical traits, biologically speaking, are insignificant. Insignificant. But he pointed those two things out, physical traits, psychological aptitudes, as a basis for segregation. Now, again, this is the reverend. This is a very influential Southern Baptist, white evangelical preacher. In fact, he has a university here in the Dallas area, Chriswell College. And these are the things that he said. Now, I am not very familiar with Dr. Chriswell. He could have repented of that racism before he passed on. I, I don't know. But at this moment, he said some very foul stuff. And as a man of the cloth, given his influence, and that's been the problem. And that's why I'm doing this video. This is not a sermon. I'm showing you how the two intersect in white evangelical circles, the Bible and the Constitution. And quite often, the Constitution contradicts the Bible. <laughs> So I don't know how in the world that, you know, they can justify this belief that God wrote the Constitution. I mean, that's that's just incredible for the seven reasons that I'm going to give you. But just sort of off the record, it's incredible also because, I mean, God didn't write one book of the Bible. He inspired others to write those books, but he didn't pen any book of the Bible. So. Imagine God going into, you know, that delegation, those 55 delegates and basically saying, hey, sit down, let me write the Constitution or that he used someone to write the Constitution. Many of those men were were slaveholders and so on. All right. So it's just a remarkable, dangerous white supremacist lie. And I'm going to prove it. Okay. We go back to this quote, for example, he noted that while his white congregation couldn't sing spirituals, quote, they can over there at that colored folks church, close quote. He had particularly strong words for outsiders who were upsetting what he argued was a mutually beneficial arrangement. Of course, he's talking about civil rights workers who were trying to dismantle Jim Crow. He said, those scandaling, good-for-nothing fellows who are trying to upset all the things that we love 
as good old Southern people and good old Southern Baptists. So he really resented them coming to the South and trying to upset their little happy situation with their happy Negro servants and so on. <laughs> and this is a reverend. He concluded his remarks by saying, don't force me by law. That is the Constitution. By statute, by Supreme Court decision to cross over in those intimate things where I don't want to go. Let me have my church. Let me have my school. Let me have my friends. Those are his racist sentiments. Now, again, whether he repented before he passed on, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he did. I'm certainly not hoping that he went into eternity having that sort of belief system. So anyway, those are quotes that Dr. Jones has in his book, The End of White Christian America. Now, I'm going to play a video in just a moment of a high-ranking politician here in the state of Texas saying exactly that, that God wrote the Constitution. Let me give you this information first. According to Pew Research Center, 72% of Republican Mormons, 56.3% of Republican Orthodox, 48.3% of Republican Evangelical Protestants, and 28% of Republican Catholics and non-evangelical Protestants believe that the U.S. Constitution was inspired by God and reflects God's vision for America. Remember that, that God inspired the Constitution and that it reflects God's vision for America. You see why I'm doing this video? Because the belief that God wrote the Constitution and it, it serves as the vision for America, that's held by many, many, many whites. And whites are in positions of power throughout this country. It is a very dangerous mixture. It is really what has been defined as white Christian nationalism. White Christian nationalism. Let me give you a definition of what that is. That term is used a lot, but let me show you exactly what it is. Christian nationalism is a political ideology and cultural framework that seeks to merge American and Christian identities. Yes, distorting both the Christian faith and America's constitutional democracy. Christian nationalism relies on the mythological founding of the United States as a Christian nation singled out for God's providence in order to fulfill God's purposes on earth. So that is a definition of Christian nationalism. I would summarize it by saying Christian nationalism is where the Bible and the U.S. flag, U.S. Constitution all merge together and just become this soup, this really bad soup, okay? This soup that caused a lot of, of misery for a whole lot of people in this country. Okay, so I think here is where I will play this video. So here's what Dan Patrick said. We were a nation founded upon not the words of our founders, but the words of God because he wrote the Constitution. He empowered them. We were a Christian state and we've been blessed because of that for so many years. All right, so you just heard the lieutenant governor of the state of Texas, Dan Patrick, say himself that the words of the Constitution were not written by men, but by God. That's astounding. And I'm going to show you that is false. And you ought to see for yourself how dangerous it is. You ought to see for yourself. But... Let me give you those seven reasons why Dan Patrick and others who say that are sharing a falsehood. So how we know God did not write nor inspire the Constitution. Number one, the Constitution, the document supports slavery. 
God does not sanction slavery of anyone. God allows slavery, even of the children of Israel, by the way, for 400 years, the Hebrew people, the Jews, the Israelites were enslaved by the Egyptians 400 years. God obviously allowed that to happen. God allowed African-Americans to be enslaved for 246 years. But that doesn't mean that God sanctions slavery. No more than God sanctions murder, although he allows many, many, many murders around the world every day. So if you're going to say because something happens, God sanctions it, then we would have to include murders and assaults and many other crimes against humanity. No, no. So when they say the Constitution was written or inspired by God and the Constitution to this day still has seven slave clauses in it, then they're saying that God sanctioned slavery and we know he didn't. Again, he permits it. There are, even today, people enslaved. There are young children, oh, young children who are sex slaves, young girls, teenage girls, and so on, who are today enslaved. God doesn't sanction that. He does permit it. Now, I could go deeper into that theologically, but that's not what I'm here to do today. I'm here to let you know that it is a false premise that God wrote the U.S. Constitution because the U.S. Constitution supports slavery. There are seven clauses still in the U.S. Constitution about slavery. Number two, if God wrote the U.S. Constitution then God supports the dehumanization of African-American people. Why do I say that? I say that clearly because the U.S. Constitution to this day has the three-fifths clause, essentially saying that African people are only worth three-fifths of a whole person, three-fifths of other people. That is not possibly true. Because we have no authority in the Bible to support the notion that God made African American or African people or black people or the African diaspora three fifths of all other people. God did not author that document because. God would not, again, create someone, a group of people that's three-fifths of everybody else. It is preposterous. It's sacrilegious in this case. Third reason, the document supports white supremacy. The United States Constitution supports, strongly supports, white supremacy. How? Well, first of all, because of slavery. Because of slavery. The document was written to benefit rich white men, primarily. That's why amendments had to be added to it. Because the original document was written by and for wealthy white men who had come here and colonized this country and who were in the process of committing genocide against the Native Americans. All of that is white supremacy. So if God wrote the U.S. Constitution, then God would be in support of white supremacy, and he's not. He's not. Fourth, the document would be on the same level as the Bible, because the Bible is inspired by God, so if God inspired and or wrote the Constitution, it would put it way up there with the Bible. 
Wow. It would be up there with scripture. <laughs> so those slave clauses would be the same as being highly exalted up there with scripture. Folks, that is foolishness. That is foolishness. When these white evangelicals say these things, it's not only foolishness, it's dangerous. And it's psych religious. Number five, the document would be unassailable. In other words, you couldn't attack it. You couldn't find any fault in the U.S. Constitution. It would be beyond reproach, beyond needing correction. And we know that ain't true because it's been amended a number of times. So to say that God wrote it or God inspired it would put it on the same level as the Bible, making it unassailable, making it beyond correction, beyond reproach. Really? That's what they believe? I mean, that is just crazy for them to believe that. <laughs> I mean, so everything done under the Constitution would, as I'm about to show you, the document would support whatever is done in its authority. So whatever white evangelicals and whites have done over the years and continue to do, if they could point to some provision of the Constitution, how would you fight it? Because they would say, hey, God wrote this document. You're fighting God when you fight Slavery. You fight in God when you fight white supremacy. You fight in God when you resist white male hegemony. You fight in God because God wrote this document and we're doing what we're doing in the name of this document. Do you see how dangerous this is and how this has been the foundation of a lot of the oppression of people of color, black people, Native American people, people outside of this country. Because white evangelicals believe that when they do something in the authority of the U.S. Constitution, they're doing what God has ordained. Enslaving people, fine. Colonizing people, fine. It's written in the document. Segregating people, that's okay. Whatever, so long as it we can connect it to the document, the Constitution. False, 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 false. And number seven, if God wrote the Constitution, the document would support whatever white supremacy do under the Constitution. Now, huh. Man, as an attorney, the reason why that deeply concerns me is because, for example, slavery was constitutional, was the law. Segregation, the law. I mean, so many evils, the law. So whatever white supremacists do or want to do, what what any provision, whether white supremacy or not, that's why I have six and seven the way I have it. The document would support whatever. And it would also support what white supremacists want done. If God wrote the document, then what it says must be good. And again, no one can challenge it. So Lynching black people, fine. Stealing and robbing from black people, fine. So long as you can connect it to some provision of the U.S. Constitution. That's how wild and rogue that thinking is. But it, yes, has, has, has been the foundation of a lot of black oppression in this nation. And the thing that is really saddening is when you see black conservatives and black evangelicals supporting this. I, I'm, I'm going to always go back 
to black conservatives supporting this this false foolishness because it, it is so obvious that this is nothing more than white supremacy wrapped in the Bible. That, that's all this is. Now, I must say as an attorney that the slave provisions, there are at least seven in the Constitution, have been overridden by the 14th Amendment, the 13th Amendment, and 15th Amendment as well. But they're still in the document. And there are people who would like to get rid of those amendments. And, and by the way, if the GOP can get two-thirds of the states under the Republican domain, two-thirds of the states, and then two-thirds of Congress, they would have the ability to change the Constitution, which is really, really difficult. And they have a good number. They may already have two-thirds right now of the various states under Republican control. We know they don't have two-thirds of the Congress. But if they ever get there, two-thirds of Congress and two-thirds of state legislatures, they can literally change the Constitution. So I, I, I thought I'd throw that out there. But I hope you see that the U.S. Constitution definitely was not written by God. It was written by flawed men who were white supremacists, racists, greedful men. 55 total, about 35 of them were enslavers. So, of course, they're going to say God wrote the Constitution. And, and by the way, God is not in the Constitution one time. The word God is not in the Constitution. The only, the, the only reference to God in the Constitution is, is, is the date where it says in the such and such and such year of our Lord. The, that, that's the only reference to God, to the Lord, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. That's the only reference. So, again, it's a false dangerous white supremacist lie and it is malarkey. That's what I wanted to share with you today. I am attorney Augustus Corbett. Thank you so much for turning in today. And, and of course, thank you for all your support. All right. Until the next time, be blessed and peace to you.